Hi you guys, this is Jamie with Whatever's Clever Boutique and today we are gonna make this gorgeous basket weave tumbler and everything that I used will be listed and linked in the description box below as well as some discount codes for you guys and I hope you enjoy this. I did something a little bit different this time so stay tuned. First we're gonna start with this template from The Vinyl Cottage. This is so great, it comes pre-cut and ready to use. So I just start by peeling that outside of our template. Then I'm gonna go ahead and add my transfer tape and I'm just gonna put that really, really smoothly over that template. You don't want any bumps or anything like that because it just makes it harder to wrap. So I use my big squeegee from the Bowen LLC and then I'm gonna go ahead and cut away all of that excess. Now, like always, we are going to do our hinge method. So I'm gonna pull back a little bit of that backing and just cut that off. And then I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this around my tumbler to make sure that it is completely straight. And the tumbler I used today, I believe, was a hog. This was the only tumbler I was able to find that fit these templates from Vinyl Cottage. You can make it work with um, Tipsy Magnolia and maybe Craft Haven, I'm not entirely sure, but they are a little bit wider, so you'll have to do the same thing dangling or put like a vinyl stripe down the back or something like that to mask the little bit of gap you'll have with those tumblers. So I went ahead and just pressed that down and when I got to the side where the transfer tape was, I wanted to be sure to lift that so that my other set of transfer tape didn't stick to that and it's just such a pain to get off. But you can see how perfectly that lines up. Now we're gonna take Louise and Panem, or Panem, Panem, <laughs> from Peach Yellow Glitters. And now as you can see there to the right, I initially was going to paint. Do the paint and then you apply the glitter glue and then apply your glitter. Well, I just so happened to have some double-sided tape sitting next to me and mid tumbler as I was peeling here. So what I'm doing is I'm peeling up all of the little sections that I want to be, I believe it's Louise is what I do first. So I'm peeling up all of those sections that I'm gonna want to be that color. But instead of painting, I went in with the double-sided tape, which fit perfectly. I believe I got this tape from Mr. Nola's Glitter, but as you'll see here in a sec, it fits perfectly in the little spots that I pulled up. So I just applied that double-sided tape instead of painting and then glitter gluing and your lines aren't straight and this just made my heart so happy. <laughs> So as you can see here, I'm just gonna go ahead and lay that double-sided tape. And then I'm just gonna keep doing that until all of my sections that I peeled are filled with that tape. And take a sharpie and I'm gonna mark what color this is gonna be and I will say that nothing really stays on this double-sided tape backing so I do have to reapply but to keep things organized I did one section at a time instead of peeling all of the different glitter sections all at once I'm now gonna peel all of the sections that I'm gonna have be Panem Panem <laughs> I don't know how to say that but it's from peach yellow glitters it's so pretty I used some not so traditional fall colors here, but it totally works for fall, if that kind of makes sense. They're not colors you would generally grab as fall colors, but put together with this vinyl, it looked so, so gorgeous. So again, we're doing the same thing with the double-sided tape. Now 
Now I'm going to go ahead and mark each of those spots. And then as you can see there, I'm remarking the teal sections as well, just because they kind of rubbed off as I was going there. So after that, I decided I wanted to add a third color. So I grabbed Cupid, also from Peachy Olive Glitters, and I pulled the rest of those sections up and applied my tape to those sections. I know this is really repetitive, but I kind of wanted to show you guys my thought process here because I shifted mid-design from the painting to this. I wanted to kind of show you my method to the madness and to keep it all organized, it just made sense for me to do each section or each color at one time, just so that I could stay organized. Now we're gonna go ahead and start peeling up all of those teal sections. Now we're gonna go ahead and apply that glitter. So all we do is sprinkle that glitter over and then I take my finger to kind of burnish the glitter into that tape. That way it's really well adhered and I make sure that it covers the tape completely. Once we get it all applied, we're gonna tap off pretty aggressively to try and get most of that glitter off. And then I'm gonna take a chip brush and just brush the rest of that glitter that kind of just static straight to that um, backing of the tape and try and brush that all off. So now we're gonna go ahead and pull all of the sections with that pinkish purple Cupid. And then we're gonna go ahead and apply that glitter. Same as before, once we get that all applied, we're gonna go ahead and tap it off and then brush that excess off. And then we'll move on to our last color, which is that Panem. And we will just put that glitter down, press it with our finger, tap it off, and then brush the excess off as well as we can. Now we're gonna go in with some Mod Podge. So I will say this did cover pretty good with that glitter on the tape, but because I didn't base paint my tumbler because I was initially gonna do the paint method, I decided just to go over those sections. I didn't do it super like crazy perfect just because it really didn't need it all that much, but I just didn't wanna take a chance that once it got under epoxy, of the glitter looking a little bit dull due to that silver base. So I just took the extra step here to do this. You totally don't have to, but that was just what I felt I needed to do. And it worked great. It turned out perfectly, so I would recommend it, but you don't have to. And I chose to use Mod Podge here because it dries super quickly. So once I was done with one color, I could very quickly move in to the next without having really any cross contamination. I still worked from darkest to lightest. I mean, I guess these colors are all similar, but the orange just seemed the lightest to me. So I went with that one last.
that's done, we're gonna go in with our Rust-Oleum Triple Thick and I'm gonna spray this bad boy three times. After that, we're gonna go in with two coats of our favorite epoxy. I use KS Resin Liquidy Split Ultra UV. I absolutely love it. But that Triple Thick really tries to, tries, <laughs> it really helps to make it to where the glitter doesn't move once you go to apply that epoxy. Once we're done with that, we're gonna go ahead and tape off the bottom of our tumbler. And then I'm gonna go ahead and base paint it teal. I'm going to make the bottom try and match as best as I can with the teal parts that meet up with the bottom. Really, you can do any color here. It, it doesn't matter, but that was just my thought was that the teal glitter was what went down into the base of the tumbler, so that's the color I based. Then I'm gonna go ahead and take a little bit of glitter glue with some of that teal after we get that all base painted and we're just gonna put that right on the bottom. And I'm actually, instead of the Louise glitter, I'm gonna use this turquoise mica, and I have no idea where I got it, but because it is so fine, it'll make epoxying my final coats a breeze. little spot there so I go back in with my glitter glue and paint mixture and just sprinkle that mica slash glitter I don't know if it's an ultra fine glitter or a mica like I said it's just a little bottle that I got from somewhere at some point <laughs> but once we finish that we're gonna go in with this really pretty black holographic um, nail tape or maybe this is actually like a really fine washi tape and I am just going to go through the tedious process of applying our pinstriping. Now I won't show you the whole process because I mean, it's pretty straightforward, but as you can see here, I just am going to go along each of those glitter lines and tape it off and then cut away that excess that may be left on either side. And it finishes this tumbler off so perfectly. my <laughs> exacto knife fumble luckily it didn't cut me <laughs> but with this much pin striping you're bound to drop that bad boy Once we have that all pinstriped, we're gonna go in with some quick coat. And I did two coats here because I surely did not want anything to lift. Then I went ahead and applied two final coats of epoxy and here it is all finished. I love how this one turned out. I absolutely love the fact that I had my double-sided tape sitting on my desk, which just saved me so much time. I can't stand the painting of templates. Honestly, that's why I steer away from them because I don't have a steady hand. I don't love painting in little sections. So this worked perfectly. And there are all sorts of sizes of double-sided tape. So in theory, I would think this could work for a lot of pretty straight lined templates. So I hope this guy or this was able to help you guys a little bit. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you next week.